We come here, we've come here over 20 years ago with our clothes on. You know, you look at SeaTac, you look at Tequila, so many businesses. They take, they, like too many things in terms of negativity, but we have authors that can talk about ourselves in a positive manner. That tells you that as a, as a community, who we are is, we're not going below the way they're being described in the mirror. We're actually going up. We're going high. The African, there's a lot of studies that show that African immigrants are the most educated people in the United States. You know, in so many, in so many levels in the education aspect. So this book itself tells you the resilience of the Somali people. Take that as one of the notions from the book itself. It kind of brings, it brings to me uh, uh, the notion that each one of us can contribute something in the community. Halima has done her part. So we, each one of us has to uplift in our school card, no? The area of the expert could high. Halima had to stay as an author everywhere. Somalis have good authors out there. There's Nurdin Farah. There's so many other authors. But among ourselves, there are also upcoming young authors. If you are any kind of field, whether it's social work, whether it's health, whether it's business, you, the only thing you have to do is put more effort into Had and you prosper. So, with that respect, I don't want to take too much time. And Halagar Al Nogodo, well, I'll kuso do one more time. And Asgar Washington, I'll go for Hassan Hai. Thank you very much. And thank you, Ahmed Abdullah. And next, I would like to welcome here Emily Campin, who worked with the Somali community. So, please welcome to the microphone. Hello, thank you so much for letting me speak. Um, I did not expect to be welcomed um, so much, so I appreciate that. Um, I just wanted to take this moment to thank you, um, the Somali community. I've had the honor of teaching English um, with the Somali community in Phoenix for a couple years, and then also now here in Seattle. Um, and I am just so thankful um, for your presence here um, in Phoenix and in Washington. I think that um, I've learned a lot from you in terms of being welcoming and hospitable. Um, I think America in general has a lot to learn from your community um, in that way. So I see a lot of hospitality in the Somali community. I also see um, a strength and a perseverance um, that I admire. I see this, you know, obviously in, in authors like Halima who are willing to share their stories, um, but also in a lot of my, my Somali students. Um, they work a lot harder than I ever knew was possible, um, and I really appreciate that, and I think that um, that's worthy of respect and worthy of acknowledgement. Um, I also appreciate the Somali community um, for your faithfulness. Um, you know, in America, some people trust in God and some people don't, and I see that Somalis do, and I think that that's very uh, valuable um, and very important. Yeah. So continue to be faithful. Thank you so much for being welcoming. Um, and yeah, I just uh, am very thankful for this opportunity, and I'm excited to hear what Halima has to share with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, and we expect you also the other events. Uh, I would like uh, also to welcome here Mr. Abdul Shukri to say a few words here. Abdul Shukri, Machoga. Abdul Shukri, we have come with the that activists in Somali community, activists who are Islamic class and they are sports. Can we have come with the Malay sports? Can Malay in Badan Badar Akten? Abdul Shukri. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Marco Hore, I want to thank you all for coming here and taking time out of your Friday night. I just don't have a lot to say. I just want to welcome Halimo Abdirsaq to our city. 
And I hope that she can be a role model for a lot of other uh, Somali youths that are out there. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Or time can I add in a wheel? Ali, Wahan Raba in an Uyero and Hal and Wahan Raba in an Uyero, Walmart Santai, Runta, or professional journalist, Timurka and Halimo and Kor Wahan Chala Hai and in an Uyero, Mohammed Ali Aden or Somali Health Board, Katirsan, Isla Marcas and Adutagani, Somali Hero or Adimbadan Taganen. And Islam Markas and our way, I do the grandison or Somali community activist. I am in Shalla for Southern Sina, I knew Inta and Uyer in Halimo, or in Ogasha Kundu and Ta, Bogan, your Hakukalefene Korto, and an Uyer of Mohammed. Mohammed Kusodo, Mkrovank. Salam alaikum. And الله ما هذا إلى أي هل كان سكاية كيني أنجو عف ما ذقبنا ما لنتي وجود بيسم يا مسمى قانا دي على كل حال بفور رمضان إن أنو ما أنتي سجوني ما أنو حفلة دتن أي حليمة عبد الرزاق يبوق جدي يا تاريخ جدي يا وحي كسب سنة ودن مرك أنا جا قبته عن روينا عن كدر صدا واحد تهاي كله وحنو ملاين ذكر دم ويوضح لين أما هذا ال إنتي سبب ندوة اللي يري مرك مهمة ده يدو واحد تهاي كلية إن عن كدر صدا أرينير أم حلي شري أما شاكية روح حلي أنا جا يا حلي ما مرنا ود عشان إني إن ده حمرتي أوقف كستو سومالية وكوه من يا إنه ودن كي وكيميت هذا هل كان وقولا شنا هو يدي أبيه كي مادين إنه وحق وحق كجيسان كرا يوقف كستا وحق قبته مركا حليمة أنا جا جارهان وحقات يتعبت الشركة هذا كسب سن حق السرفايفل كا إن أي إلى هو امتحاني تبدينا أي امتحان كاسي أي الله سبحانه وتعالى وككوري يذنا محلي كرا أي موج سجيس سينما أي رنتي واحدة كبرنا على أيسن سمين، ومهمة ديدو أيتها هاي قف كستا أو بناء دمه، أما كل ركيسو هم دو بعده ما هعد دارو، والله سمت حام يا دنيا دتن، أما جراثيم أو بكتيريا أو هذا فيروسس هل قوقيم تحامو، أما محام كره هذا هذا تالنشيسو الدنيا ده هل قوقيم تحانو. سيدا يا حاتة ونلوشو امتحان ويانو إلا قفكا وكلا كل ما يربي جي ومي لكن ستسالها رأينتا ودن الله يحيا كسابسا امتحان كحق عافماتكا تاتكا يغو رنتي وانيغو بان كتشرو سيدي وآها وغمات محالي جري فو جيغنين اما وما اقون ايا امباورمنتو حق عاسي وي مقانتاي تسالها نهدي قفكا وحانو صدو جرادو مرنا وهرت الله سبحانه وتعالى باكو كان يتبادلنا محمد رضا سبب أشرة أو يكتمد تذكى يجو مال يشوجين بقى أما ودن كي هتشوجين أما هل كان هتشوجين محمد رضا دقا إلا هذا واحد أشرة أو أنا وري أن كل جنة هاي أو قفك إنه حنون كبو أركي أو إنه يتهاي محل لي أشرة واحد لقح الشهادة وحنا عصاق الله أو أيد عيسى مركب دبعتو ينبضن مرة بين حليمة يشكى إذا أن كهر قاتو يدا إسكالت عاو مركا تعسيدات is the topic أو أنا جوا هي عدة إلى مدى أحمد هي محلية شري هذا professionals كأرنت كح كح أحر أي محان كرا هذا كهولين تعسي وأرنت رنت يعني هذا شغل يصير أرنت كلا يعني محان كرا هذا أي كده واجينا يصير أوقف كسطو سامعن وكه الله يوحي تهاي ودن كي أما تولد أكتيم أما أبها وكل شيء إن قف ولا بوحو جيسن كرا يوحك قبته أما school list يا أما محلية شري ملعامات جرتي معلمين تيادي وحترتا يا أما عسب تال ماشا بربوري وعد كل دولتا يا أما عبها وكل شيء سيدي وحلو قبل لها قف كست وكف كريو مركا وحوي أن تلابوي أن كنوع عصو كلا وحي كنيسة أن نجا ودن كي كفوق الليست إن أي نوح كقبلنا أو أي نوح كترنا مركا إن شاء الله كل يا حليمة يا كهل دونتا برامش بدن يوحيابة بدن وأي نوقت لك شيء مركا سوحوي أن 
سيدا اينو قدرنا هاي انتي نعاو هل كان فردي دا وحو ويان هدي مركي كستابا اينو ستاقنو او اينو قعان اسو جينو محان كلا اس كل جينو اس قعان قبانو مالين والبا تولا اينو دي سيكرنا مالين والبا ملعامد بينو دي سيكرنا مالين كستابا كلينيك بينو دي سيكرنا تاسو كين ايسا مركا ودن كيجي اينو سانو قد اسمو مركا ان شاء الله هذا الكيجان تاسان كسو حريا وبالله يتوفيق والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the... And Adbu Mahat Sayyya, hey, Muhammad. Wahan, inshallah, wada suge inna imba dhamba. O an manti cha'ala yanin an utke da dege sanno, ama anu fikrat de da aidi ya da hello. And Halim Sa'diya, Halim Abdirissaq, o ah, Quraga, Buga, Darakten, o laga ya baqa arkin ina da horo wa akhrisen. Qarna ya hadi cha'ali yanin ay gattan o arkan, wa gabar so maaliya da o Quraya. إسلام مركز إنه أوبر يرتي إنه حنونك كده عاي أي كورن تي كبد بادي له عافمات كسيها تن أضرار كيسان وعن ربا إنه أوي روح إن شريف شريف وحو كم ذي هاي هل لسه دويو ده اللي يرى ذا وقت هو ورتي إنه أوبر مدقري أم بوجان حلي ما نجرب استعجال ما له اسم محمد شريف and sorry to tell you I'm not an activist or I'm not a doctor here but I am an Alliance Community Clinic part owner, uh, which will be opening in August. I'd like to start with that. Um, I'm here today to show support for my sister. After reading this book, Halima, I want to say that I really admire you. I really do. Uh, uh, it's an honor to have you here in Seattle and being part of our family. And uh, Halima has went through a lot. Uh, only people that are very close, like myself and and uh, my family, only would know her struggles. Uh, this book means a lot. Uh, not only she just started writing, Alima's been writing for a while, almost, uh, I would say, about 15 years now. Um, <clears throat> after reading this book, Halima, it's not only just a writer, she's uh, also involved heavily in her community. She's uh, She's been in... Uh, Seattle, not Seattle, well, today she's been in Seattle, but she's been in Arizona, Minnesota, and uh, other parts of this country that she had events, Ohio. Halima is, uh, she's uh, really a person that's very strong. I mean, I can't really imagine just uh, fighting with this uh, disease and, and, and living. It's just, it's just, it's just amazing. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome Halima Abdursaq right now to the stage. Uh, please come up. Fine. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening, everybody. I'm a little bit nervous, so give me a break. Um, I am happy to be here today among people who are eagerly awaiting to read this book, fascinating book of my father's legacy, A Somali Woman's Journey from Somalia to U.S., as I stand in front of you all today, it is very difficult for me to share my experience of war, refugee camps, my father's death, and my own cancer survival diagnosis. I was seven years old when the civil war that had erupted on the streets of Mogadishu, Somalia, I vividly remember walking out school into streets filled with chaos, gunfire, bloodshed all around me. From that day onwards, my life was constantly changing for the worse. And I found out how strong I was. My father, who worked for the United Nations, had to flee from Somalia, from the city of Mogadishu to Kismayo immediately without his family. 
Soon the rest of my family and I followed him as we were leaving Mogadishu. I was devastated to see the I was devastated to see the beautiful Mogadishu covered in blood as of a little girl. I was traumatized to witness men, women and children gunned down in the streets I once played in. With the grace of Allah, we arrived in Kismayo to reunite with our beloved father in our grandparents' house. My parents decided to leave the country and go to Kenya for the safety of their children. We arrived in Kenya by after surviving our ship sinking off the coast of Kenya, but our ordeal was far from over. Even though we only stayed in Otanga camp for two years, but it felt as if it were eternity. Otanga camp had its trials and tribulations. With the help of my uncle, we left the refugee camp and traveled all the way to India. We stayed there for a few months, but my family decided to move to the neighboring country of Pakistan for the next nine years. The first four years in Pakistan, we lived without our father. Our beloved mother worked a hard day in, day out to make sure my siblings and I had a roof on our head, food on our table, and it was a bit tough for my mother to take care of five of her children, plus two sisters, one brother, four nephews, and one cousin without my father. My mother is the most unselfish person I've ever met. She made sure each and every child in the house were treated equal, going to school, cooking, cleaning, and making sure everyone were at their best. I remember my mother would not eat until all of us ate. Wouldn't go to bed until every last one of us were asleep. Finally, my father arrived from Kenya. There was a huge relief for her at the, at, as he resumes his duties as a father and a husband. He made sure his wife was happy. That was his first priority before anything else. Their love and joy for each other is what made us as strong as children. In June 2000, we came to the United States of America. And two months later, my father passes away for liver cancer. Losing my father was perhaps one of the hardest things I ever had to deal with. He left many times, but this time he was leaving for good. But he remained in our spirit. It was hard on my mother once again resume again his duties as well living life without him. Each trials and tribulations was nothing without him for all of us. In our culturally, the oldest child automatically takes the responsibility of the house of the head of the household, but in this case I took that accidentally and I don't know how to take my father's shoes out of my feet. I can never fill my father's shoes, but try my best to keep his legacy. I never thought in a million years I would be having surgery, let alone to receive a diagnosis of ovarian cancer. In 2009, July 9th, I was diagnosed with dystrominoma, which is a very rare ovarian cancer. And it happens between the ages of 20 and 30, not before or beyond those ages. My life changes forever. With the doctor calling me and said, I don't know how to tell you the news I have for you. And I said, what doctor? And she said, 
you have a dash or minoma. And that word minoma is what I understood. And I asked and said, what kind of cancer is it? She said, it is an ovarian cancer, but a very rare cancer. As I hang up the phone and I cried and cried, continuously cried, and asked myself, why me? Why me when I'm good to my family? Why me when I'm good to my mother? Why me? when I'm fulfilling, trying my best, my father's duties, and why me? <laughs> to my mother, and my full, I'm fulfilling my father's duties. Then my younger brother came and said, what is wrong with you, sister? And I explained to him, and he said, sometimes American doctors might not be right of their diagnosis. But if it is true, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing your patience, wants to see how strong can you be. Stop crying, turning yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be patient with his scary diagnosis. My mother came as well as the remaining of my siblings. None of them believe these doctors were right at any given time, even today. I'm going to read the book from the beginning and I will also read another passage towards the end. Uh, the first part is, over the loud speaker, I hear crackling of a static and the voice of our principal. His words echoed the little classroom I was sitting in, and on that fateful October afternoon, I put my pencil down and listened as he spoke. He was telling us that the school was dismissed and that the war had begun in our country and we all needed to get to the safety of our homes as soon as possible. His voice was strange. It held the sound of fear in it. Second book, second part of the book is, the nurses put me on a bed in the hallway of the ER and it seemed with every step they took, the pain in my abdomen increased. They laid me on the bed, but once they left, I was up and down from the bed to the floor, grabbing my stomach and looking for some way to relieve even a little bit of the pain. I tried to curl into a ball on the floor, to stretch out on the bed and hold my stomach, and to put my knees on the floor and my head on the bed. I, la I felt a strong urge to go to the bathroom, and I, was, and, I, and I also wanted to vomit, but nothing came out for me. The hardest part of writing my memoir was reliving my past not so great memories. Memories that I buried in the back of my mind. Memories I refused to talk about it with anyone. My main goal of sharing my story is to inspire others. Past pain and suffering will always be part of your life but they don't define you. You can motivate that experience to strong yourself, to pull yourself up when everything else is pushing you down and to never lose a hope when the odds are against you. My extraordinary, my extraordinary life story, which I survived so many painful trials, is still remain a strong-willed Muslim woman who was raised to believe that there is no limits in life 
And I still believe that. Today, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a few people that put me on this stage, brought me to this great, beautiful state. There is a young man who I love so much, who is close to my heart, who is the reason that I wrote this book and who managed my time of writing this book to share with everybody and not to be afraid. And that is my manager sitting right there at the end and his name is Mahdi Jamale. There he is. I also want to thank Mohammed, Mohammed Audon who, who found me on Facebook and inboxed me to get my number and he's been bothering me every day till today to come to this estate and share my life and my story with you all. And then there's another one uh, and her name, uh, she is also close to my heart. She's one of the people that I look up to. She is someone that I'm very close to, and she's also very close to my heart. And her name, she's sitting right there on the pink jacket. Her name is Anissa Jamale. <laughs> and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't her, and I wouldn't be standing in front of you if it wasn't her as well. Then there is this lovely young man standing right there. Without him in Seattle is an empty box for me. <laughs> and every day that, the day I met him till today, he calls me and bugs me and tells me what to do and tells me how to share, not to be strong, not to be afraid and be strong and be somebody. And, and, and I love him so much, Muhammad Sharif. And each and every one of you who are here, Muhammad Adhan, uh, and I want to say thank you so much for the invitation, all of you. I only said very little. What I said is nothing until you all read my story. And my book is right there. Get up and buy, share with your friends and your colleagues and your family. And thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Halima. That is, uh, takes a real woman with a big heart to stand over here and share her stories in front of many of you guys tonight. Um, you know, I would say this book, it's not a money to her bank. It's a money that's uh, for good cause. Please, uh, if you didn't buy the book, it's right there. I'm selling it. Maddie's selling it. Uh, it's all going for a good cause, so please go out and go buy that book. And if you already purchased one, please purchase it for your family members. Uh, that would be really uh, great. Um, right now, <clears throat> again, Halima, thank you very much for being here.